To our guests visiting the cathedral but not attending Mass, we ask that as you enjoy your time here, that you please be reverential and respectful of this space and of this sacred service. And good afternoon and welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral. Today is Tuesday of the third week of Lent. Psalm responses can be found in your missalettes on page 94. Our celebrant, Monsignor Ritchie, rector of the cathedral, will be offering this mass for Janina Jaya. And our deacon is Anthony Guskowski. Please rise and join in singing the opening hymn, number 424 in the hymnal, The Glory of These 40 Days, number 424. and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters, my brothers, I invite you to join me in kneeling to ask for God's mercy during this sacred time. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your grace not forsake us, O Lord, we pray, but make us dedicated to your holy service and at all times obtain for us your help through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Azariah stood up in the fire and prayed aloud. For your name's sake, O Lord, do not deliver us up forever or make void your covenant. Do not take away your mercy from us. For the sake of Abraham, your beloved, Isaac, your servant, and Israel, your holy one, to whom you promise to multiply their offspring like the stars of heaven or the sand on the shore of the sea. For we are reduced, O Lord, beyond any other nation brought low everywhere in the world this day because of our sins. We have in our day no prince, prophet, or leader, no burnt offering, sacrifice, oblation, or incense, no place to offer first fruits to find favor with you. But with contrite heart and humble spirit, let us be received as though it were burnt offerings of rams and bullocks or thousands of fat lambs. So let our sacrifice be in your presence today as we follow you unreservedly. For those who trust in you cannot be put to shame. And now we follow you with our whole heart. We fear you and we pray to you. Do not let us be put to shame, but deal with us in your kindness and great mercy 
deliver us by your wonders and bring glory to your name, O Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your kindness are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Repent. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, for I am gracious and merciful. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of as you may announce this holy gospel worthily and well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the holy gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property, in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had him put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to them, you wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The most common prayer that we say as Catholics, or even as Christians, is the Our Father. And Part of it is very much in line with what we heard in today's gospel. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and I think most of the time when we say the prayer, we kind of don't listen to what we're saying or what we're praying. 
because for most of us, forgiving other people is not the easiest thing in the world. Uh, it comes trippingly off our tongues when we say the prayer, but out of our hearts, it's not always an easy thing to do, and sometimes it's an impossible thing to do for us. Not because we're bad people, but because we're, we're humans, and forgiveness is a, is a beautiful part of being human that a lot of people cannot accept completely, especially in certain areas of their lives. Um, I can't tell you how many times, Father, I'm sorry I, I did this thing wrong and this person wronged me and I can't forgive that person. It it's not, doesn't mean that this, the person who can't forgive is, is condemned, but it, it is something that the person is going to hold on to in his or her heart and will make their lives more difficult. That's one of the most uh, easy, one of the easiest way, ways to think about forgiveness is that when we forgive others, especially if it's something that we've held in for a while or it's, it's been very important to us, whatever was done against us, if we are able to get to that point, it takes a big load off our hearts, it takes a big load off of what we carry around with ourselves. And so for, forgiveness is not only for the other person, but it's also good for ourselves. It's a very positive and good blessing that we have. So Jesus knew what he was talking about when he instructed his, today, Peter, his apostle, when he said, now Peter was kind of very um, spiritually oriented when he said, should I forgive my brother seven times? Now that's a lot of times if you think about it. And then Jesus' answer was, no, 77 times, which is obviously an exaggeration to make him think that Jesus wanted him always to be able to forgive others, whatever it was. So I think during this holy time of, of Lent, as we look at ourselves and look into our hearts and our souls, this is a, a very important aspect of, of who we are in, in our lives, uh, who we, whom we do not forgive. So perhaps today and for a couple more days during Lent, let's think about um, the fact that if I can, and sometimes we can't, sometimes we're, we're, we're wounded so deeply and just humanly speaking, it's, it's kind of impossible. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that we are able to be much more generous with our forgiveness than we, pro we probably know. But if we think about it, if we pray about it, if we uh, strategize about it, we may be able to say, well, these people are still going to be the same people, but in my heart I'm going to be able to forgive them. We don't necessarily have to tell anybody they're forgiven, but if we and the Lord talk about it, it's a, it could be a very good thing, not only for the other person, but even more importantly for me, the person who has that resentment in, in his heart. In the name of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our shepherd, Cardinal Dolan, that God bless them and guide them, we pray to the Lord. We pray for ourselves, that we do everything we can to bring happiness and holiness to our families. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the ability to be able to forgive other people, that God give us his grace so that this, may, this effect may help us. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have been sexually violated or harassed or abused, that God's loving and healing hand may touch their lives. We pray to the Lord. For those who have asked us to pray for them and that God may be part of their lives and help them in their difficulties, we pray to the Lord. In the silence of our own hearts, let each of us add our own particular intention. We pray to the Lord. O Lord our God, we ask you to listen to our prayers. We bring them to you in the name of our brother and savior, the Lord Jesus, who is with you as God forever and ever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and the work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. My sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that this saving sacrifice may cleanse us of our faults and become an oblation pleasing to your almighty power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels. With one voice of praise we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember your servant Janina, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. <laughs> Let us share with one another a sign of our Lord's peace. It's Christ, happy birthday. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion hymn is number 416 in the hymnal. Have mercy on us, Lord. Number 416. Salvation, way to life. 
Let us pray. May the holy partaking of this mystery give us life, O Lord, we pray, and grant us both pardon and protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. O God, founder and ruler of your people, drive away the sins that assail them that they may always be pleasing to you and ever safe under your protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a great day, everybody. Please join in singing the closing hymn, number 690 in the hymnal. There's a wideness in God's mercy, 690.